All right, so I've drilled out the rivets and I'm going to take it apart and show you guys the pieces and explain what they all do. So we've got the cover and the cover seals up around the edge of this diaphragm. We've got a spring that pushes down on the top of the diaphragm. We've got another spring that pushes down on the top of the diaphragm. We've got the diaphragm itself and inside if we look closely there's a pin and that pin goes through a hole and connects to a seal. Now that seal is what shuts the fuel off and maintains the fuel pressure. What I'm going to do now is pull it apart and the seal will fall off inside of there. I just wanted to show you guys that that's where it normally stays. Okay. So here's the seal and it fits on the bottom of this little shaft. So how does this work? Well the way it works is we have the gas pressure from the house coming in through here and we've got the pressure going out to your stove here or to your burners here. Over here we've got a separate hole as well. So we're going to imagine now that these holes are plugged off. So what happens when these holes are plugged is the gas starts to flow in through here and as it does it pressurizes underneath this diaphragm and when it builds up enough pressure it actually lifts on the diaphragm and causes this seal to seal on the bottom side of that hole. So we've got pressure pushing up on the diaphragm causing it to seal so when it reaches the calibrated pressure that seal sh seals off the hole from the bottom side and the way that it's calibrated is by the strength of these springs so we've got two separate springs here and the stronger these springs are the more gas pressure it takes before the gas pressure overcomes the spring and shuts itself off is if I open up this hole now and I start feeding pressure to the burners say I turn my stove on and I'm now cooking something the pressure underneath here starts to drop because there's gas going out once the pressure drops below the strength of these springs the spring overcomes the valve and pushes the valve back down and opens up the orifice and the gas starts to flow through. As you use gas in the system the pressure lowers and because the pressure lowers the spring overcomes the gas pressure and allows more to flow in underneath the diaphragm. When the pressure equalizes again the diaphragm lifts up, overcomes the springs and shuts the gas off. Well, that is a basic explanation of how this works. So just a quick recap of how this works. We have the inlet and an outlet. We've got a diaphragm which normally has a seal on the end of it. We've got a spring that is calibrated to our desired gas pressure. So what happens when we have the outlet plugged the gas comes in from the bottom pushes up on the diaphragm and at a calibrated pressure it overcomes the pressure of the spring and lifts up on the valve on the bottom of the diaphragm which would normally be here and that seals the gas off if you turn a burner on. That lowers the gas pressure which lowers the pressure underneath the diaphragm which allows the spring to push down on the valve and that causes more gas to flow in. So basically you just have that happening constantly. The gas pressure matches the pressure of the spring and when it does it overcomes it and seals off the gas. Propane valves work in the same way. They are just calibrated 
to uh, different pressures. If you have an air compressor that has a knob on it that you can increase or decrease the pressure, it works much in the same way. The difference is, is that the knob is connected to the spring on the back side of this plate. And when you turn that knob, it puts preload or more pressure on the spring, causing more pressure on the diaphragm, which means you need more air pressure before it can bypass. So with an air compressor, the further you turn that knob in, the higher the spring pressure is on the diaphragm, which means it requires more air pressure to open the diaphragm and have uh, your airflow through.